Good morning. Welcome to CBC. Uh, this is Make a Difference Month. It's uh, the new campaign that CBC has. Uh, so we're glad you're making a difference by coming to church today, whether it's by yourself, with a friend, with a significant other, with your family. Um, this is a great place to be, so we're glad you're here making a difference in your life. Uh, for those of you that are new to, to CBC, or if this is your first time coming, I am Josh McDaniel. I am not Coach Val. I am a coach, so don't try to adjust your eyes. Uh, I coach at uh, Reagan High School right down the street. I coach football. Uh, I'm also teaching English, so if there's any Reagan people in here, go Rattlers. Uh, I got to throw out a little plug. <laughs> But today we're going to talk about um, regret, and, and I'm going to get off on a little tangent real quick. Um, you know, when we pray in the back, um, if you don't go back there, if you're ever hurting and you're in here and you need prayer, that is the place to go because this woman prayed over me in the back, and it was such a prayer that, you know, I played football, and I wanted to go strap it up and play football for Jesus when we got done with that prayer, so uh, I, was, I was hyped, so... Uh, if you ever have a, have a need or a want, those people are back there just ready to, to pray over you and pour into you. So I, I really want to encourage you to go back there. But I saw that video earlier in the week, and, you know, I was just thinking about regret. And it's been on my heart this week, regret. And, and I don't know how many of you struggle with regret. And sometimes I sit back and I think, you know, how, how do you deal with regret you know, that's hard. You, you, you know, you, you can forgive, but, you know, you, you can be forgiven, but can you forget? And, and I don't know how many of you struggle with that. I, I know I do. But I don't know that, that, that it's a, a concept that, that is really developed in the church. How do we, how do we grow and change and move, move past that? You know, I mean, do we have a good understanding of that in the church today? I mean, we have a, a, a monitoring system of it, you know. I mean, we we, we, we feel bad, you know, we, we, we feel bad so we don't do things. That's the way we, we don't regret. I mean, just take, take, for example, today. You wake up today and, and you know, you, you kind of monitor your love for the Lord. I feel bad and I regret I didn't go to church last week. I probably need to go to church this week, you know. Uh, you, you monitor that. So you, you come in here and, and, then, and then when you get here, you know, you're, you're thinking, you know, well, you know, I... I guess I should read my Bible more. I regret I didn't read that Bible study last week or, or read my devotional or even read the Bible sometimes, you know. I regret not doing that. Or then you come in here and, and, and you, you sit here and, and, and you see worship, and worship here is amazing. And these people on the stage, I'm telling you what, can bring it. And, and you see people just, just in the presence and they're, and they're worshiping and they're raising their hands. And some people, I mean, they just stick them way up there. I love seeing that. Although I used to sit right there and I would block the camera guys when I would do that. So, <laughs> But sometimes you may regret that you don't raise your hands up as high as you should or you may worship like other people or you, you, you regret, you, like, why aren't I getting into that? Why, why don't I feel the same? You know, and, and then, then maybe you regret, you know, like, do, do I even go share the message when we're done? Do I, do I, do I, I, I speak it into my family in the week? Do I speak it into my, my, the people I go to school with or the people that I work with? And we have those regrets. And that's just on Sunday. I mean, think about that. Just, just on Sunday, just coming to church or walking into church, we feel these regrets. What about the rest of your week, the rest of your life, your job, your marriage, your family, you know, your, your children, your significant other, how many times do you deal with, with those regrets throughout the week? You know, I mean, that, that's kind of the common approach that we have is, is, is we make ourselves feel bad, you know, and, and, and that's how improvements come. We make ourselves feel bad. I, I shouldn't eat this Krispy Kreme donut this morning, you know, and I feel bad. <laughs> You know, and, and, and change will come. And the thing is, is when we take that ideology, when we take that theology of, I'm going to make myself feel bad so I don't regret things, change comes slow, very slow. And then with that slow change, you, you start getting, you know, very frustrated. Why am I bogged down by this regret? Why am I bogged down? Why can't I change the patterns of my life? I, I don't want to eat that Krispy Kreme donut, but I keep doing it, and I regret it. And then you start to become very exasperated and very tired and weary, and you're just weighted down with this regret. I don't know how many of y'all feel like that, but I've been there. 
And here's the thing, God doesn't want us to, you know, to sit up here and talk about regrets so you will multiply the things you monitor in your life. You've got enough as it is, just thinking about coming in this Sunday morning. He wants to give us liberation. He wants to give us freedom from being bogged down by all that constantly, all the time, that regret. I mean, imagine living like that, constantly monitoring yourself. I mean, it's just, it's weirful. It's, it's, it's. Tired. I mean, imagine yourself like you're, you're this tire with like a hole in it, right? And, and, and it's, you, you try to, you live and you're bogged down with that regret, but you got to pump yourself up and pump yourself up. And, and you get full, but you get empty. And you get full and you get empty. And you never feel fully, fully figure it out. You never fully get it inflated and you just become so weary. So we're going to look at today how, how God uh, can change the way we try to change ourselves. And we're going to look at today how God will give us a greater freedom to change so we can live our lives for what he means and plans for us to live and no longer be in bondage to regret. You know, I am a coach, so we're, gonna, we're kind of going to get into a little training today. Uh, so you, you're, you're completely not going to be away from Coach Val. We're going to talk about training and, and, and things. And, and today we're going to talk about how do you retrain your heart to not feel regret. And, and, and I don't know about you guys, but, but regret bogs me down a lot. I'm a very emotional person. And, and regret hits me pretty hard. And, and I don't know how to do it. So the first place to go uh, is the Bible. So we're going to start with par, part one. Uh, of, of this retraining. And, and part one is don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. So if you've got your Bible, take it out and turn to 2 Corinthians 7, 10. And Paul, Paul's talking to the church of Corinth here. And he says in, in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, he says, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. Now let's look at that again. Godly sorrow brings about a repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. Now what does that mean? And then he says, but worldly sorrow brings about death. So let's, let's unpack that a little bit. You know, we should feel bad. We should feel sorrow for the sin, but God's will, his will is, is a repentance without regret. He, want us, he wants us to, to feel sorrow for the sin, but he, want us, he doesn't want us to be bogged down to that. You know, how, how do we do that? We look at how do we do it? You know, biblical repentance is not, you know, to improve yourself by, by feeling bad because of what you've done wrong. I mean, we we don't need that in our lives. Even though you may not know how to change it, biblical repentance is about not having regret. I mean, making yourself feel bad, you know, about not doing something, you know, you can do it and you can do it and you can do it and you can conform and, 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 and you can make it on your own will for a certain amount of time. But here's the thing, guys, it's only temporary. When you do it in your will and when you do it in your way and your behavior, it's only temporary. And it's not God's will. And Paul talks to us again in Colossians. So if you want to flip over to Colossians 2, 23. He said, these are matters which have to be sure. The appearance of wisdom is self-made religion and self-abasement. And for those of you that like me, I'm a hillbilly from Tennessee. I don't always know what these big words mean, even though I'm an English teacher. I tell my kids I'm, I'm not a grammarian, I'm a literature guy. Making yourself feel bad. It says, it says the appearance of wisdom and self-made religion and self-abasement, making yourself feel bad, are of no value against fleshly indulgence. Because here's the deal, when you, when you repent by making yourself feel bad, you're repenting by regret. It just doesn't work. There is no amount of feeling bad that will ever make a payment. There is no amount of feeling bad that will ever justify what we've done wrong. You know, self-inflicted pain and guilt doesn't justify you in front of God. 
It says in Romans 8, 33, God is the one who justifies you. Amen? So we're going to look at part two. Don't close the door on God. So we talked about feeling bad. You know, how... I don't want to. I don't want to feel bad, Lord. I'm feeling bad, and that's how I kind of monitor my regret. But now we're going to kind of. It gets a little worse at times. We we get a, it gets a little worse because you move from feeling bad to control your regret and 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 your decisions to now you start condemning yourself. Now we're we're going to talk about you know motivating improvement by condemnation. When you do that, you hide yourself from God. You close yourself off from him. You close yourself off from the world. You close yourself off from people that will be in your life. You know, Jesus talked about this in in Matthew 23, uh, 13. And he was really talking to, to the Pharisees there. And he says, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut yourself off from the kingdom of heaven. And you shut yourself off from the people. Now, what he's talking about here is, is when you try to motivate yourself uh, through repentance uh, or motivate yourself uh, through condemnation, we're being like the Pharisees. We're being like, like those same people. You're shutting yourself off and you're shutting yourself off from others and from the freedom necessary for experiencing God's uh, closeness. You know, if you demand that you repent uh, by self-condemnation, you are trying to change in a way that is according to the law. It's according to your will. It's, it's according to how you want things. It's not according to what God wants. It says here in, in Acts, if you got your Bible, turn to Acts 13, 39. It says, through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things. And here's the deal. Everyone through him that believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. And when we, when we condemn ourselves, when we, when we make ourselves feel bad, it's our will. It's not his will. That's not what God wants in our life. Not for us to make ourselves feel bad, not for us to, to, to condemn ourselves not for us to be held in bondage of regret. It says, through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. And, and I kind of got like a, a coach's point here that I want to share with you guys. You know, if there's one rule that, that I feel like God could give you today about changing according to grace, You know, it would be, you know, you have to delight in the death of the ministry of condemnation towards yourself. And what does that mean? That when you start feeling bad, when you start dwelling towards the regret, when you start hearing that voice that you're not good enough or you weren't good enough or You should have done this, you should have done that. When you start going there, you have to attack these thoughts. Just like if I was talking to one of my athletes or I was talking to one of my players, you have to delight in the death of self-condemnation. You have to attack it and be ruthless. Get away from me. I'm not gonna have those feelings in my heart. You gotta be strong, you gotta be assertive, and you have to be unbending. When you get those thoughts in your head, when, when it's trying to press you down, you have to stand firm, you have to stand strong, and you can't let that overwhelm you. God doesn't want that. But what's, what's the key to this? How can, how can you get to that? How can you get to that strength? How can you get to that that that? power that that God's wanting to give you. There's two things. And if you want to write these down, repentance requires that you retrain your heart to stop trusting in self-inflicted guilt, self-inflicted condemnation, self-inflicted pain, and that you start trusting in Christ's payment for your sins. It 
It's not about you and not about what you can do or how bad you can make yourself feel or how much regret you can live in, but it's about start trusting in what Christ can do because he paid that price for you. He paid that price for the sin. You no longer have to carry it. You no longer have to be held bondage to it. Repenting also, the second part, requires that you retrain your heart. You retrain your heart to, to, to think about, you know, what is the best way to correct yourself? How can I correct myself? How can I correct when I start, when I start doing these things, when I start feeling bad, what's the best way to, to change next time? And I'm gonna give you some keys here. You know, think about what you do when, when, when you're in regret. And I don't know about you guys, but when you're just so overwhelmed that you're just, you're, you're just bogged down, how do, you, how do you act? Do you stay away from God? Do you stay away from the people that are close to you? Do you stay away from the people that speak into your life? You know, what gives you the freedom when you draw near to God? When you finally decide to come back, what is it that brings you back? What is it that, 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 that opens that, that, that overwhelming feeling and, and lets his, his love come in? I mean, are you trusting in the forgiveness of God? Are you, are you, are you trusting uh, in the forgiveness of God or are you doing it just, you know, I feel bad long enough. I've, I've made myself feel bad long enough. I've condemned myself long enough. It's okay, I can go back to God. I paid my price. Like I said, he's already paid that price for you. We should trust in the forgiveness of God because it's the power of the cross that, that cleanses us. But here's the key. Here's, here's something that, that, you know, when you, when you sit back and, and you, you analyze and you think, you know, when I'm bogged down, when I, when I have all these, these feelings, what, what do I, what can I do? You need to be thankful. You need to praise God. You need to praise God in the lowest point. You need to praise God in the highest point. You need to use thanks and praise to help your heart hear the good news and how safe it is to trust in the cross and the price he's paid for us. And then when you do that, start listening. Start listening to what you're, you're, you're thanking God about. You know, I, I mean, how, how, are you, how are you bringing him in? You know, react with thanks and praise at the slightest indica indication of when you, start, when you start feeling bad. You know, when you start, it's about me, 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 regret, regret, regret. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I know it's a tough day, and I know I'm bogged down, but thank you, Lord. I praise you for, for just... Let me wake up today. Thank you, Lord, for just, for just giving me this breath that I have, for giving me these two feet that I can walk on. I'm not gonna let that bog me down. I'm not gonna be held in bondage to that. I'm gonna thank you and praise you every day, God. Get your heart to hear that it's far more effective to change by hearing this thanks and praise. That's what's gonna change you. That's what's gonna free you. And that's what's gonna, gonna bring you close to God. I'm gonna say this right now. The cross is more powerful than your sin. The cross is more powerful than your regret. The cross is more powerful than your bondage. The cross will give you a freedom from this regret that, that you, you will never understand. Thank the Lord with great joy that you don't have to, to put your faith and, and your justification in self-condemnation, but you can put your faith in the justification that he paid the price on the cross for you. And when you start getting down and, and when it's hard, delight your heart Delight your heart and, and praise, praise God that you don't have to wait to trust. You don't have to wait and go through this feeling bad process or this condemnation that God tells you that, that you don't have to feel bad. You're done with feeling bad. You just have to trust and you have to believe in the cross. I'd like for everybody to bow your head right now.
I don't know what, what, what brought you in here today. I don't know what, what, what made you walk in here today if you, were, if you were dragged, if you were guilted, if you were regretted, if you, I don't know what problems brought you in here. I, 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 don't, I know that there's people struggling in a strained marriage. I know there's people struggling and bogged down with regret. I know there's people that are in here today that, that are just asking, Lord, just please take this pain away. I don't know how. And I, I'm speaking to, to you today. I'm gonna pray uh, for any of you in here that just want that freedom from regret. I'm gonna pray to you, to you specifically, those of you that, 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 that don't know Jesus, that want that freedom, that, that need that freedom, that desires that freedom more than anything in the world. And it's a simple prayer and you don't have to kick yourself anymore and you don't have to be held in the bondage anymore. You just have to pray this simple prayer. So if everyone can pray this prayer together, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I thank you for the price that you paid. I come to you today to make you Lord of my life. I come to you today and ask you to be my savior from this day forward. I will walk to you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. And now the next prayer that I want to pray is for everyone that, that is a believer that, that is struggling, that is sitting here today. So with all heads down, Lord, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the price that you paid for us. Those of us that didn't even deserve it, Lord, those of us that, that, that are foolish that try to hide our, our, our pain, that try to hide our, our, our mistakes, that try to hide our regret from others. Lord, I pray this today. Let us not, Lord, be confined into our past. Let us not, Lord, be defined by our bondage. Let us always know that, that we are not alone in our struggles, Lord. Let us know that, that God is a God of restoration. That you, are, that you are the one that restores us all, Lord. That you restore our hearts, that you take away our pain, that you take away our regret. Let us look to you always, Lord Jesus, with thanks and praise. Let us find that freedom and joy and peace we so desperately desire. In Jesus' name, amen.